you could, I think, make a good argument that the kinds of memory and time scales that are important for everyday memory function really have to do with um, long-term memory, and that is memory that uh, where we reach back to maybe an encounter we had um, or a person we met and their name um, yesterday or a week ago or a month ago or even years ago. And so I really think that one of the ways in which we can improve the way that we test for memory, both in clinical neuropsychology as well as in cognitive neuroscience, is by probing for memory function over longer time scales. And so one of the projects that our um, uh, group has been working on is in adapting a clinical therapeutic device called the Responsive Neurostimulator um, or RNS system by Neuropace to um, adapt this clinical device for cognitive neuroscience work in an outpatient setting. So the RNS device, as some people in the audience might know, is a um, responsive neurostimulation device. Again, for some patients with um, uh, refractory focal onset epilepsy that are not surgical candidates, they may be good candidates for this device um, because their seizure foci are not amenable to resection, and so they can be very good candidates for this device. Um, and some patients with an RNS system have electrodes in memory structures, so most notably hippocampus and um, adjacent lateral temporal neocortex. So what we try to do is, in a proof of principle study, is to adapt this clinical system for um, a cognitive neuroscience task. Um, and what we did is we used uh, um, some research accessories which the Neuropace engineers developed to interface with the clinical system without, it, um, without changing the FDA approved product. And what these research accessories allowed us to do is to interface our experimental laptop with the clinical system to number one, deliver um, uh, trigger artifacts to time our cognitive testing with the uh, EEG and number two, allow for continuous EEG recording, um, which allows for kind of seamless behavioral testing, which is important for memory testing. And what we found is that in three, we, we performed this um, proof of principle and cognitive task. Um, we chose a, an associative memory task where patients were asked to remember faces with professions, um, and then were later asked to recall the profession when they were shown the face. And we looked specifically at the encoding window to, um, and compared basically the EEG during the encoding window of trials which were later successfully remembered versus forgotten. And we found that there was a very unique um, hippocampal signature, an increase in gamma activity in the hippocampus um, during trials which were later successfully recalled, but not during encoding trials which were forgotten. And so this was a clear um, hippocampal signature of increased gamma activity that could later predict whether or not the patients were going to remember. So we saw this really nice signature, very consistent with prior work in the cognitive neuroscience and memory in both our RNS patients as well as our five traditional surgical EEG patients. Um, and this was important for us to see that we could adapt this technology and a new way to do cognitive neuroscience research, um, comparing it to the gold standard of surgical EEG, as well as tying it back to what others have found um, in other very nice experiments in the cognitive neuroscience and memory, assuring us that we're able to see um, meaningful neurophysiology in the hippocampus with this device um, when adapted with our research accessories and um, uh, and when integrated with our, our cognitive task.